Yes, look at that. 120 hertz, baby. Woo! Have a look at this Gigabyte Sombre 17. All right, champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom. It's Windows Pro time. Right, so if you are new around here, come on, sub up, get on the Woo Train. And if you want to help a champ out there, give me a thumbs up for the video. So if I was to tell you a gaming laptop with a big 120 hertz display gtx 1060 full gtx 1060 mind you and a six core eighth generation i7 8750h processor how much do you think that would be now the key point here is 120 hertz display and i'm thinking with those sort of specs you're going to be paying at least three grand here in australia and around 2k in the us but this thing here is actually really aggressively priced i seen it here in australia at 2199 dollars and i would expect that would be under 1500 dollars or 1500 dollars us and there are laptops at around that price point with gtx 1060s oh some of them have max Q's, but you know the same processor and pretty much the same gpu but they all come with you know 60 hertz displays and there isn't many that come with 120 hertz display and that display on this is actually really good especially at this price point i mean obviously to get to this price point you have to make compromises but this 7.3 inch display although in the desktop might not look the greatest it might look like it lacks a little bit of contrast when you game it looks perfectly fine it looks really nice the gaming experience you get with 17 inch displays and especially when they're 120 hertz like this one and i think this is what separates this from anything else around the price point is that 120 hertz display so if you haven't heard about this one definitely check it out because you're going to have to spend a lot more money to get these sort of specs so anyway it's a gaming laptop let's see how it games right a few things to note here it was freaking hot like it was nearly 40 degrees in melbourne so that's around over 100 degrees like inside around 29 degrees when i was testing it so the maximum torture test here single channel ram that's what it come with that's how it gets tested i do have ram here i can put in it but no i'm not going to do it gigabyte come on if you're going to send out review units make sure they're dual channel now i've done all this testing at medium because i want to get the maximum out of this display of course you can crank up the settings to high and ultra but yeah you're only going to get around that 60 frames per second if you want higher frame rates you're going to have to go down to medium take that little bit of a haircut but it looks perfectly fine at medium don't worry about that so obviously if you have it at higher settings the temperature just will go up slightly but remember i'm testing in 29 degrees so that probably offsets that so it's probably the temps you're going to get at high or ultra now when it comes to thermals the thermals are actually really good on this there is some management there's some power limit throttling it has 180 watt power supply maybe if you put a bigger power supply that would stop that but there is some thermal management too but that being said it's very minimal thermal management yes the temperature of the cpu will get up into the 90s when it's run stock even when it's undervolted for that matter just the clocks go higher that's only on the cpu side gpu side you're only going to get maximum just over 80 it will only throttle down to like you know the low threes 3.3 3.2 and that's in battlefield other games the clock would stay much higher at 3.6 3.7 and the gpu was pretty much 1700 1800 so you are getting quite a lot of performance out of this laptop if you undervolt it, the clocks will shoot up to 3.9, which is its max, and you will get some games in frame rates there. Temperatures, sort of the same, but just the clocks go higher. And a lot of games, it was maintaining 3.9, no problem whatsoever, depending on CPU usage, of course with the undervolt and even without the undervolt some of the games it could do 3.8 3.9 and i'm willing to bet that if you had a cool house like you know 20 degrees 22 degrees yeah you'll be even getting more performance again so let's get into the benchmarks and you'll see in the brackets uv is the undervolt frames and all these games are at medium settings 1080p so dsx mankind divided we had 66 frames per second gta 5 82 frames per second battlefield 5 we had 72 frames per second in PUBG we had 63 frames per second which are 355 frames now that's the system crusher so that's pretty good Fortnite 76 frames per second Black Ops Blackout we had 67 frames per second and to round it all off in Overwatch we had 108 frames per second now with the undervolts some of the games I was getting 
10 frames per second more some were like virtually nothing but a lot of these games were getting 70 80 90 frames per second some 100 so that's where you're going to get the benefits of this display getting that super connected feeling and for me personally it's just a much better gaming experience than a 60 hertz display so i'm very happy with this i'm very happy with the performance thermal management very minimal a little bit of power limit throttling you know the noise it's a gaming laptop they're all friggin loud this is no different it doesn't get over hot externally it doesn't get that hot and the cpu yeah it'll tickle into the 90s there and then yeah throttle down a little bit and sit in the 80s so make sure you subscribe to see the full review it is a really solid gaming machine so i'd like to really thank you guys for watching and until next time guys tally ho